first loss function and in this part of our course we are going to have the hinge loss or the multi-class SVM loss. Just by the name itself, um, in this part of our course, we are going to talk about the classification loss function. So first, what is a loss function? Loss function evaluates how a certain algorithm models the data. So we have been discussing about this one. In as much as possible, we would like our model to model what the real world is. In most cases, if not in all cases, we do not actually have a perfect model, like 100% sure that it's going to model a real phenomenon. What we target here is that it is close to the reality. So we have this deviation, which is high, which means that the loss is also large. And when the deviation is low, of course, the loss is also low. So our main target here is that we would like to reduce the error in our prediction. To do that, it's always very important to do the optimization function. And why we have to do this once for us to be able to reduce the loss and so that we can make our model very close to the real world. And we have already discussed that loss function can be chosen based on what kind of algorithm we're going to use. It can be the classification and it can be the regression. So in our former lessons, we have talked about the regression loss function. So in this part of our course, again, we will just focus on the hinge loss, which is very particular to the SVM or the support vector machine. So the SVM loss is computed using this formula. This formula simply tells you to measure the correct category from the incorrect ones. So what does this mean? When the value is negative, then that means that the loss is very much big. But when the value is higher than zero and even higher than one, then the loss that our function has is very low. So don't forget that. So the correct or when the score of correct category is greater than the sum of all incorrect categories by some safety margin, then we can say that we have a very good classification model. Most important here is the term, the maximum margin classification. And why is this very important? So let's remember this, that the SVM has its significant limitations. One of its notable limitations is that it can only assign one label at a time and its running time in polynomial ones or its running time is polynomial in in number of classes. So which means that as the number of features become larger, then our algorithm or model has difficulty in assigning different labels. And another one is that SVM cannot jointly classify correlated instances in a systematic way. So now here is the problem because when we deal with a large number of features, which is a common place in data science projects, SVM may find it hard to classify these correlated features. And when it fails to do so, the result would be that it fails to take advantage of the most important features these different features give. And so the question is this, how are we going to remedy this one? The remedy is now with the use of the maximum margin classification. In this maximum margin classification, we use here two approaches. So we have the first one, the SVM approach. So we need to do this one because as what we have said, um, SVM is very good in working with very high dimensional feature spaces. And so it can generalize these features. And the second one that we're going to add to this approach is the graphical model approach and why we have to do this one remember that we have said in number two that support vector machine cannot jointly classify correlated instances this is where the graphical model approach is very good at so it can model correlations and dependencies in many different principled and very efficient ways do you want to know more about this channel just click these cards we do have a lot of free data science courses for free like machine learning essentials, deep learning mathematics, and a lot more. 
here, you can always learn an upskill for free.